Well, two separate crashes in the GTA with vehicles slamming into homes. Shortly after one this morning in Brampton, a car went out of control on Credit View Road at Williams Parkway, and the vehicle crashed into a house and then burst into flames. Three people were in the vehicle at the time. They've all been taken to hospital with serious injuries. One other person was treated at the scene for a burnt hand when they helped get the people out of the car. And we have a live look this morning at the scene from Credit View. Police say that the vehicle was northbound on Credit View. And although there's no access to Williams Parkway from there, the vehicle ended up crossing the roadway anyway before hitting the home. Now, police are keeping our cameras a good distance away from where that crash happened. The driver is being charged with impaired driving, and police are investigating whether or not speed was also a factor. And in Toronto, two people injured when a car crashed into a house in the East End. It happened on Pharmacy north of St. Clair just after one this morning. The driver climbing the curb and taking out the stairs of a home. The vehicle ended up on its side. A man and a woman, both in their 30s, were in the vehicle at the time. Both were out of that car when emergency crews arrived. Now, the man's injuries are not life-threatening, and we're still waiting for an update on the woman. No one in the home was hurt. So far, no charges have been laid. Pharmacy now reopened in both directions to traffic. Well, the city is appealing for help for the residents of a St. Jamestown high-rise who have now been displaced for a week after a fire. They need clothing, and there's an urgent need for places to live. More than a week after the six-alarm fire displaced 1,500 people, the residents of a Parliament Street apartment building are being allowed to go into their units to retrieve some essential belongings. And according to Fire Chief Matthew Pegg, the repairs to the building could take months. I am by no means an electrical engineer. I can just tell you that from, you know, by experience, when, when we see damage that is this significant and on this large a scale, that often requires, and in my experience, is something that requires a number of weeks in order to, uh, to repair. Now, people can donate items for children who are going back to school. The city will be announcing some drop-off locations soon as well. Financial support can also be made online with the Red Cross. And, of course, you can provide some housing support. You can contact the city if you can, either online or by phone. All that information is available on our website. That is citynews.ca. The U.S.-Mexico trade agreement and threats of tariffs on the auto industry could be seen as high-pressure tactics by the Trump administration in its NAFTA negotiations with Canada. But Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says that he's encouraged by the progress made by Foreign Affairs Minister Christia Freeland. We have been encouraged by the uh, progress made uh, by our NAFTA partners over the past, uh, past weeks. And uh, our team is right now in Washington uh, digging into uh, the progress made and looking at what the next steps are. And his optimism is being shared by our American counterparts. U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Munchen, a top advisor to Trump, says that he believes a deal that includes Canada can be reached this week. The president's objective is to have deals with Mexico and have a deal with Canada. And if we could do it as one deal, we'll do it as one deal. If we do it in two deals, we'll do it in two deals. Negotiations to rework NAFTA, a deal that's nearly a quarter of a century old, have been underway for months, but talks with Canada have been stalled since May. And despite its new deal with the U.S., Mexico has repeatedly expressed its support for a trilateral trade agreement involving Canada. A two-day public viewing is underway at the Museum of African American History in Detroit as fans of Aretha Franklin arrive to pay their respects to the Queen of Soul. A shining gold casket carrying Aretha Franklin arrived at the museum yesterday with fans of the beloved singer lined up around the block waiting for their chance to say goodbye. I wanted to thank her for her legacy, for her contributions to civil rights, for her philanthropic services, and I just felt like I needed to be here. Sad and happy because she's not suffering, but we got her, mu we got her music to last forever. Franklin died of pancreatic cancer at the age of 76 earlier this month. A star-studded private funeral will be held Friday in Motown. 
The service will feature musical performances from Stevie Wonder and Faith Hill, along with a speech from former U.S. President Bill Clinton. And coming up a little later on, BT will be speaking to Toronto residents who are heading to that visitation in Detroit. 609 here on BT. We'll send it down to Mel and Winston next.